Hello and welcome to Unit 1, Section 2, Episode 1 of Fisher's Class Notes. We're going to start our discussion about the European explorers to the Americas and the Caribbean. Our vocabulary expedition, Christopher Columbus, Columbian Exchange. We'll talk a little bit about the triangle trade, privateer, new world, colony, immunity, and a little bit about the Spanish Armada, and we'll finish that up next episode. By the end of this episode, I want you to send four things. Number one, the competition over colonizing the land in North and South America and the Caribbean or the Americas or the New World was really, really, really uh, contentious. Particularly, number two, particularly between the two most powerful European countries at the time, the Spanish and the English. Because the more you colonized, not only did you expand your kingdom, but more importantly, you had a lot of new natural resources, those raw goods, raw materials that you could then exploit and sell and make a lot of money and become richer. And number three, Europeans wanted to spread Christianity. They felt that this was their duty, no matter what um, religion that the people, the American peoples, the native peoples of the Americas had, we felt that we had a better religion and that we needed to spread it. And then finally, that leads us to Eurocentrism. Europeans at the time thought that their belief system and their societal structures were superior, were better. And so rather than trying to learn from the new groups and that new to them in North and South America and the Caribbean, they just kind of bulldozed through and enforced their ways. Okay, so let's first talk about the Vikings. The first group to, the first European group to the Americas that we know of were the Vikings. Um, it, Leif Erikson left, led a, uh, an expedition likely from, um, uh, he was from Iceland, and they landed in eastern Canada in what is now Newfoundland, uh, or Newfoundland is how it's spelled. Uh, they, so they were Norse, they were Viking. Um, that would include not only Iceland, but Finland and, and, and uh, Norway and Sweden and that area up there. Uh, they were very famous as pirates and as um, explorers and they explored and took over all sorts of places within Europe. So they landed in uh, uh, Newfoundland. So here's Iceland, they came around Greenland, kind of came up there and in these areas up here of Canada. Uh, they uh, they talked for years, the, the Norse sagas, which, which are um, long poems uh, that were told and passed down, they talked for years about these um, explorations. But we found proof in 1960. So two Norwegian um, explorers went to um, and uh, discovered the remains of a Viking site in Newfoundland, Canada, and um, but they didn't find evidence as to why they left. Did they fight with the American Indian groups there? Did they just decide that they didn't have enough supplies or did they just decide that they wanted to go home because the kingdom or their empire was expanding too much? Who knows, we don't know why they left. So next, of course, famously, you got Christopher Columbus in 1492. Columbus landed in the West Indies. He was an Italian explorer, but he was working for Queen Isabella of Spain. Uh, he was searching for a quicker route to the East Indies in Asia because that's where they were getting all their great goods for sale, spices, silk, and other desired goods over there. Um, but he ended up landing in the Caribbean in an, the island of what he called Hispaniola. That's where you have um, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Uh, this area, they became known as the West Indies um, because they got goods from the West Indies in the West and the East Indies in the East. Notice that they both named them out of what they could exploit from these lands. His voyages to the Caribbean resulted in gold, enslaving, enslaving not native populations, and then eventually taking African populations and, and bringing them to the Americas and the spread of Christianity. The Spanish quickly established colonies in the Caribbean and South America and Florida. So they were going to they were trying to go north, into North America. Spain brought the first African enslaved peoples to the Americas and the Caribbean, and they worked on those plantations. So this is what we call the triangle trade, bringing, um, bringing slaves from Africa to, um, to the Americas. And then of course these people are from, and then bringing the goods 
to Europe. And so it kind of forms a triangle, which is why they call it the triangle trade. Um, he also brought a lot of diseases. He himself may have died, it's unclear. He himself might have died from the diseases that he got when he went to the Caribbean um, from the American Indians, but masses and masses of American Indians died because they lacked the immunity um, that the Europe that um, from the diseases that the Europeans were spreading um, and so they didn't have immunity which means they didn't have um, they didn't have natural defenses against uh, these diseases okay so um, a little bit later we get another explorer in 1524 Giovanni de Verzano he landed in the Carolinas, actually. He came across Cape Fear. We talked, we looked at those maps of the Cape Fear River, and he went up the coast of North Carolina. We're gonna read one of his, um, his uh, um, uh, when he described, he described the people that he met um, um, around uh, Northern North Carolina or Virginia. He went all the way up past New York and then explored around New York and then into what would eventually become Massachusetts. Um, he was working for the French, and he, um, he actually thought the Pamlico Sound, remember the sound of North Carolina, you get those pretty big sands, he thought the sound of um, North Carolina was actually the Pacific Ocean. He had no idea how much land there was still left to explore. Um, he met the Wampanoag, who we will talk about famously of the first Thanksgiving. It didn't go as peachy as, of course, we like to pretend it did, and we'll talk more about that in class. But he actually did meet up with the Wampanoag. The Wampanoag would have been right here. This is what would eventually become Connecticut and Massachusetts, and then that's part of New York, Long Island. Okay, in 1539, you get the Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto. He lands near Florida. By the 1520s, Spain really um, had conquered most of the people in Cuba and Mexico and all along the Pacific Ocean. Um, also searching for a quicker route, so he's still looking. They're still not giving up on this quicker route to the West Indies because they just don't have an idea of how big the Americas are. They think, okay, here's a little land, the little islands, what have you, maybe a chain of islands, and then we're gonna get to the Pacific Ocean. Um, because really, the um, that's where everybody, everybody wanted to get to China and to India. That's where all the spices were, the silk, things like that. Um, so he landed also in the uh, Carolinas. He went, came in Florida, then he came up in from into South and North Carolina. And then um, he met with the Catawba, the Catawba of the, um, of the Piedmont region and the Cherokee in the Appalachian Mountains. And then he crossed and went further. Uh, he was, he treated, all these American Indians so badly. Um, he cheated them, he stole them, he raped the women, it was awful. Um, he ended up dying of fever, so he himself was also a um, victim of the Colombian exchange. Um, but Spain basically gave up trying to colonize the Carolina, uh, and they just focused in South America and the Caribbean after this, although they did have their established colony of what would one day become the state of Florida. And then finally, you have the English. Um, in the 1580s, England, the English under Queen Elizabeth I, so here's Queen Elizabeth I, she became so famous for being um, an explorer. She herself was not an explorer, but for supporting these explorations that you see, this is a pretty famous picture, you, uh, painting you've got, where you've got like the, this, the um, oceans behind her, and um, you know, just like the conquering of lands. And then this is a picture of Sir Walter Raleigh, one of her favorites, um, who organized the expeditions. He himself did not always go on the expeditions, he organized them. So the English and the Spanish were the most powerful nations at the time in the 16th century. Spain, Spain bought, brought, got tons and tons of gold in the Americas. Now most of that gold was in Mexico and South America and a little bit in the Caribbean. So the English were focused more on North America where there wasn't as much. Um, but of course they exploited the other raw resources, natural resources available. Uh, the English wanted to stop Spain, so Queen Elizabeth allowed a bunch of privateers, privateers 
um, to plunder or steal from the Spanish ships. Basically, privateers are legal pirates. She allowed them, she allowed these pirates to go and take all this stuff. Queen Elizabeth I gave Sir Walter Raleigh a charter to establish a permanent, a permanent colony in the America. They settled on Roanoke. Of course, that fails. We'll learn about that in the next episode. But he essentially was an, a, a legal pirate. Um, and this would be a good place because it would be hidden behind the um, Outer Banks or the, the um, Barrier Islands, but still close to Spanish Florida so that they could attack those Spanish ships. Okay, thanks for watching.